And we are live. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to this week's Ask Shelly segment. My name is Shelly Fan Fan. I am your emotional intelligence expert coming to you live to share a question that has been asked of me. And I am going to solicit the feedback of my listeners to help me in providing an objective response to the person has, who has wrote in today. Our topic is a woman who is uh, married and has been in a 10 year marriage and feels like her marriage is suffering because she is still in love with her high school sweetheart. So we're going to get into that in just a second. I want to tell you a little bit about what it is I do. Um, as an emotional intelligence expert, I have the privilege of working with corporations, with families, with ministries, and helping them to literally reach peak performance through the provision of psychoeducation. Any time that we want to do anything with a human, right? Anything that has to do anything with a human, we have to have a high emotional intelligence quotient. And that is what I do. I teach all things emotional intelligence. I'm a licensed psychotherapist here in the state of Florida. And I also have the privilege of working directly with individuals and helping them to overcome emotional injury. These lives is no attempt to replace that therapeutic process. That's completely different. These are individuals who are consenting for treatment. They have committed themselves to a journey to overcome emotional injury in order to be the best version of themselves. So if that is you, you can reach out to me at www.ashshelly.com. You can call us at 407 three five zero five zero seven zero you can email us at info at askshelly.com if that is you and you want more help more support you want someone that's going to push and be an accountability partner be non-judgmental then that is for you now we are going to go ahead and get started with our question today let me know where you are tuning in from Hello, Prophet Kimberly Scott. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Bree. Hello, Shante. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. What's going on? We got to connect here on Instagram. The Big Closer, Elkin, Sharon. Thank you so much for, thank you, Elkin. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, listen, while I'm providing my feedback, I do not declare to know all of the answers. So I do want you to comment. Let me know how you feel. What is your feedback? You are members of my consultation team. So let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. Dear Ash Shelley, I watch your segment all the time. Thank you for being such a lovely guidance to all. I'm a young mom who has been married for 10 years now. My marriage has always been rocky and I've tried my best to serve in my marriage. My dilemma will be shunned by so many, but I have no one to turn to. I'm in love still with a high school sweetheart. I have been for 12 years now, just when I think I'm over it. The overwhelming, feeling, the overwhelming feelings come back. I start missing him. I've cried out for God for help, for release, for him to pour into that hole that I feel. I feel like I'm going in a circle, like a carnival ride. I don't know how to release this. I have a great husband. I believe we rushed into our marriage. Now we have children and my heart aches that now I have to stay unhappy because I don't want a broken home. I know I must find my own happiness. I feel hopeless sometimes. I just want to run and don't look back. I know I'm not the victim here, but the guilt of these hurt, the guilt of these thoughts hurt so bad. 
Again, this is a wife of 10 years. She says, I serve my husband. I'm doing what I need to do, but I cannot get over these thoughts of my high school sweetheart. I am in love with my high school sweetheart. These thoughts are bringing her guilt. I'm going to repeat the question to give you guys an opportunity to get your responses together. Put them in the feed. Let's help her together. She says, uh, Elkin on Instagram says, is she still in love with him? or the idea of what was, you were in my notes, Elkin, we're gonna get there. I'd like you to keep going, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna read it again. Dear Ash Shelley, these lights are hot. Is it cause I'm getting, is it 44? Is it 44? Woo! Or is it these lights? Okay. Dear Ash Shelley, I watch your segments all the time. Thank you for being such a lovely guidance to all. I'm a young mom who has been married for 10 years now. My marriage has always been rocky and I've tried my best to serve in my marriage. My dilemma will be shunned by so many people, but I have no one to turn to. I'm in love still with a high school sweetheart. I have been for 12 years now, just when I think I'm over it. The overwhelming feeling comes back. I start missing him. I've cried out to God for help, for release, for him to pour into that hole I feel. I feel like I'm going in a circle, like a carnival ride. I don't know how to release this. I have a great husband. I believe we rushed into our marriage. Now we have children and my heart aches that now I have to stay unhappy because I don't want a broken home. I know I must find my own happiness. I feel hopeless sometimes, just want to run and don't look back. I know I'm not the victim here, but the guilt of these thoughts hurt so bad. First and foremost, I want to thank the listener for tuning in every week. I, I don't know who you are, but I wanna thank you for your question. I wanna thank you for your 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 courage your bravery in doing so right and so um bravery has nothing to do with with doing things um in the absence of fear but doing things despite the fear so i thank you so much for writing in and sharing your personal life with the world and um i i do want to say though you talked about your situation being shunned by so many listen that's so many that you're referring to they do not have a heaven or a hell to put you in <laughs> okay so this is a no judgment zone you are wanting to fight for your marriage for your family it doesn't matter what people think it doesn't matter what people think so thank you for uh, sharing your question, for writing into me. I look forward to a future alliance with you. So I wanna talk about the um, high school love. High school, how many of you are still in love with your high school sweetheart? How many people are still in love with their high school sweetheart? Tell the truth, shame the devil. How many of you? Think about your high school sweetheart. You may not necessarily be in love, but you find yourself often thinking about that high school sweetheart. Good afternoon, Marjorie. Elkin says, she says she knows she has to make herself happy, but is she doing the work to make herself happy? I'm curious on what she, on what she does to bring joy to herself. So Elkin says, I didn't have a high school sweetheart. Who had a high school sweetheart that feels that there's still a connection there or you're still thinking about him or her. I wanna know, I wanna know, I wanna know. While I wait for your responses, I do wanna say that, you know, and I say this all the time with these questions, there's so much that we don't know, right? I would love to know what specifically are the issues in the marriage that she's saying that they have been struggling for a long time now. I would want to know, um, specifically what they have done to address those issues, right? I would love to know what they're doing to address those issues. I would want to know if she still has contact with that high school sweetheart. These are all questions that we don't have the answers to. So I'm going to be as general as possible and definitely share your feedback as well. Marjorie says, I did, but I just thought about him because you asked. <laughs> I don't think about him. Okay, all right. So let's talk about 
high school love. And we cannot talk about high school love without talking about the adolescent brain. And you guys are probably like, how come every time she is responding to someone, she refers to the brain? Why? Because when we're talking about emotional intelligence, it's important to understand how our brains operate, okay? It's important for us to understand how our brains operate to truly maximize our emotional intelligence. The adolescent brain, I have the opportunity to teach this to parents so that they can understand how to translate the behavior of their adolescents into some understanding that they can wrap their minds around. The adolescent brain. So when we're talking about adolescents, when we are talking about adolescence, we are talking about the ages of 12 to 25. The ages of 12 to 25. I just wanted to stop that, that ticker there. Okay. So we're talking about the ages of 12 to 25. That's the adolescent um, age group. So high school falls into that. And, and when we're talking about that high school brain, that adolescent brain, we have to understand that this is an underdeveloped brain. That mean, it doesn't mean that they're dumb, right? It just means that it's underdeveloped. The brain is still maturing at that time. For example, the frontal lobe, this is the area, this is the area of our brain that's responsible for our decision making. This is where our consequential thinking happens. Our ability to forecast the consequences of our actions happens in our frontal lobe. Guess what? The frontal lobe develops for the women at about the age of 25-ish and much later for men. Let me let that sit there while I have some water. 25 for women and much later for men. I'll let you make your own conclusions. So in addition to that, <laughs> the brain is pruning synapses, it's pruning neurons. Um, CEO Chick says on Instagram, later for men, yes, ma'am. And so our brain is pruning synapses and pr pruning neurons. Our cerebral cortex is developing. And as a result of that, as a result of all the changes and the developments that are happening in the adolescent brain, it causes them to be at risk of addiction, namely love addiction. Why? Because the emotional centers of their brain, the areas of the brain that's responsible for regulating emotions is still developing. So they don't have the capacity that adults are supposed to have to kind of balance our emotions. It's still developing. And so they experience emotions, especially emotions such as what's perceived as love at high intensity. It's intoxicating at that time right? Intoxicating at that time. There are studies that show that the brain activity in response to the emotion of love at that age equi equates to a cocaine high. And I hope none of you know what that looks like or feels like. Let me go back to comments. <laughs> okay. So, it, 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 is, it, it equates to a cocaine high. So in the midst of that, dopamine is at an all-time high in the brain. That's the chemical that is responsible for making us happy. That's the chemical that's like all over the place when we are gambling, that, 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 that chemical in the brain that's going all over the place when we're on the Hulk ride at Islands of Adventure or wherever you go, right? And so it can cause addiction. So it's important to understand that in those high school years, they are feeling all of these intense emotions with very little responsibility to balance that emotion out. So we have to be really careful. I wanna caution the listener to be very careful when you start comparing the love and the emotions and what you're going through with your husband, comparing it to whatever emotions and experience that you had in high school. Your mature love with your husband um, also comes with stressors, financial strain, parental strain, and so many other situations that you did not have to deal with, I'm assuming, in high school. 
So I caution you when you start to say, oh my God, I just feel so in love and, 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 and I can't get him off of my mind. I wanna also talk about something called emotional recall. Emotional recall. This is when our emotions guide how we recall an event. This is when our emotions guide how we recall an event. So let me give you an example. Let's say that a woman had these major intense emotions for a man. And she recalls the relationship as being romantic and amazing. It was the best time of her life. Well, if she was experiencing these very intense emotions for him, right, then she is recalling events in her relationship through those lenses where an outside person may say, well, you know what? It really wasn't all that good. Actually, he was emotionally absent. He really didn't care for her. He didn't prioritize her. She was always chasing after him. But emotional recall will cause us to uh, remember situations and events through whatever emotion or intense emotion we were experiencing at that time. And so you may be referencing this time in your life with the intensity of the emotion that you felt at that time. We're talking, going back to the whole adolescent brain. And now you're saying, I cannot be happy. I will never match this happiness. So I want you to be careful about emotional recall. Emotional recall. Now, listen, I wanna talk about something that I did a couple of weeks ago. And that was this. So I have this little app in my phone and it and it guides me to build up the endurance to run in somebody's marathon. Hopefully I'll be able to do that by the age of 60, right? Running is not my thing, but it tells you to run for two minutes, stop, walk for two minutes, run for five minutes, whatever it is. So I just follow it, right? And so I had missed a couple of days and I was feeling really guilty about doing so. And so I decided to put on some ankle weights and do it with the ankle weights in a way to kind of make up for the time that I had lost. Let me tell you, it was a completely different run. I felt like my feet were dragging, and but I was so committed to finishing that I did not take the weights off. I just continued to drag along. And when I got home, I had the nerve to try to compare my time against the run that I did the day before without the weights to the run that I did with the weights. There's no comparison. Those are two completely different runs. I added 20 pounds to my workout by putting a 10 pound ankle weight on each foot and jog. I want you listener to hear this. Be careful when you start to try to compare your time when you ran without the weights and when you ran with the weights. There's no comparison. That's apples and oranges. So it's important that we, we got to remember that those carefree college relationships, those carefree high school relationships is, it, you know, we, we are, we're seeing through distorted lenses when we try to compare our current situations with a man that you are living with every day. You're not traveling to Gainesville to see him on the weekends or going to see him when you sneak out the house when you're in high school. But every day, waking up with the same person, going to bed with the same person, coexisting with the same person, planning to live the rest of your life until your last breath. With the same person, you have financial issues. You gotta parent the kids. You gotta go to extracurricular activities. You gotta meet. It's like apples and oranges. And so again, I want to caution you when you start to use the lenses for of a free, carefree high school, right? High school, you know, free love. Like all we have to concentrate on is when we're going to meet again and how we're going to sneak out and all. And I'm not, I am not going to minimize the, the experience because there's actually studies that show, well, I don't actually studies show that high school sweethearts and, and those relationships don't, you know, the, 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 the percentage of them uh, transitioning into a happy marriage are very low. However, and that's because we we're, we're, we're young. 
there are so many changes that happen and so developmental, so many developmental stages that are needed to be overcome after high school that people, what? Drum roll, please. People change and that is okay. But I'm not going to minimize your experience because I don't know the situation, don't know how long you guys were together. I don't know those things. I don't want to minimize, but I definitely want to caution you when you are um, comparing the two. Um, let's talk about divorce for a second. There are studies, and, and this one, I am not able to provide specific statistics, but there are many studies that show that of individuals who get divorced, who got divorced because they felt that the situation or the situations were irreparable, that five years later, they surveyed those same individuals and the percentage was what it was high. It was over 50. I want to say high 60s, early 70s realized after five years after their divorce that the issues were actually reparable, that they were able to be repaired. And so I'm telling you that the problems that you have in your marriage, right? The problems that you have in your marriage right now, that's causing you this, this, um, this discomfort that's causing you this distress, that it can be repaired. There is help for that. You can get therapy for that, for a professional that specializes in marriage and families that can diagnose the root of your problems and treat it, can hold you and your husband and your husband accountable for those thought and behavioral changes that can save your marriage. You have to put in the work because the longer you allow those problems to last, the longer you allow yourself to be in a situation that's not causing you happiness, the more you will continue to fall back on that free and happy time. We use it in therapy as an anxiety buster. As an anxiety buster, we help people go back to that time in your life, that vacation, uh, that vacation spot, that moment when you felt the most peace. I do it for myself. I remember there was a night when we were in Jamaica. I don't know, Elkin, if you're still on, when we went to Jamaica, I remember like the first night that we were there, we were on the beach and it was like, it was like maybe like eight or nine o'clock at night. And I remember that moment just sitting there on the beach. It's nighttime. It, the, 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 oh my God, the air felt different. The peace was just like overwhelming. And I'm sitting there and I said, I don't ever want to forget this moment. And so when I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm feeling stressed, I have to close my eyes and go back to that moment. And so what I'm telling you is that you're kind of, you're fantasizing. You're fantasizing about your high school relationship. And I think the more active you are in addressing the problems in your marriage, the more proactive you are, the more that you are being prompted to think about the reasons why you married this man in the first place. There's a reason why you're not with your high school sweetheart. There is a reason why you looked at that man and said, I do. You're not telling me that you were manipulated. You're not telling me that who I thought I married isn't. You're saying that I have a great husband. You are acknowledging that you have aligned yourself with a great man so it is worth the fight. It is worth you committing yourself to healing your marriage. And the more that you heal your marriage, the more active you are in dealing with the situation and not just brushing it under the rug and doing your day to day, the more active you are in dealing with those problems, you will find that the frequency in, in, in fantasizing about your high school sweetheart will decrease. The duration of those periods that you are fantasizing about him will decrease. <laughs> the severity and the intention of those memories that you're recalling will also decrease. The more you are switching your focus on making it work with your husband, the weaker those fantasies will be. And so I'm encouraging you to get help Align yourself with, a, ex, with an experienced therapist that can help you work through your marital issues. I want to say that one of the listeners today said, I wonder what she's doing 
to make herself happy. Let me go back to that comment that was Elkin. I want to make sure that I go back to that. She says, and I wonder if she really gave her husband a chance to love her. Wow. Is she still in love with him or the idea of what he was? And a lot of the times we fall in love with a silhouette, right? It's the silhouette. So whatever face you want to put in that silhouette is fine. And we have to be careful. We have to be able to challenge that. You know, we have to be able to challenge the silhouette. I really don't know when the grass is ever greener on the other side. I, I just don't know of any situation where the grass is greener on the other side with the exception of the neighbors on my block because they take very good care of their grass and I don't. Elkin says she knows that she has to make herself happy, but is she doing the work to make herself happy? I'm curious on what she is, what she does to bring herself joy. I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but we talked about this and I'm going to repeat it. There are certain needs that we have as human beings that only we can meet. Let me say it again. There are certain needs that you have, ma'am, that you have, sir, that only you can meet, ma'am, that only you can meet, sir. And the moment that we give that responsibility to someone else, your expectation becomes unrealistic and it becomes unfair and it is extremely unhealthy. We have to stop outsourcing the responsibility of our happiness to other people because it will never work. There are certain needs that we have that only we can meet. And so thank you, Elkin, for that comment. She reminds you, listener, what is it that you are doing to create that happiness for yourself? And there are people that hear these types of concepts and are like, I really don't know how to do that. And you can learn how to do that. You can learn how to do that. You can learn the skill sets. You can learn those mechanisms. And that is what therapy does. You are able to learn those thought patterns and the perceptions that truly impact your ability to achieve happiness for yourself. You are able to address the emotional injury that's a barrier to you making yourself happy. I am telling you, listener, I am recommending that you enroll in family counseling, in marriage counseling, excuse me, and you start to get active about working on those issues. And the more active you are on working on those issues, and listen, you've already showed restraint. You are guilty about thoughts that you haven't even acted on. And we live in a society that if we feel we do, if we feel we do, there are not many people left that actually exercise self-discipline, which is defined as the ability to say no to what you want to do that's unhealthy, right? And the ability to say yes to what you do not want to do, which is something that is extremely healthy. That is self-discipline. And you have exercised that, right? Because your thoughts have not yet become actions. You are a perfect candidate for therapy. And I definitely encourage you to align yourself with a gifted expert that can assist your husband and you achieving the highest level of wellness, the highest level of harmony, the highest level of intimacy that will indirectly correct the frequency, duration, and the severity, and the intensity of your fantasies. What do you guys think about that? Tiffany says, oh, preach. I completely agree. Yes. I'm assuming you're agreeing to the issue with there's certain needs that only we can meet. <laughs> there's only, there's only, there, there are certain needs that only we can meet ourselves. So make yourself happy. Hello, Mark on Instagram. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's Ask Shelly segment. Guys, I'm so humbled by you guys. I love that you tune in and you join my consultation team. Thank you so much for uh, letting uh, you giving me your feedback and allowing me to provide amazing feedback to my listeners. This woman that, that wrote in today and said, I'm so guilty about these, fantas these fantasies that I have about my high school sweetheart. I want to be able to be present in my marriage. I am encouraging you to 
get therapy, reach out to me at info at ashshelly.com. You can call me at 407-350-5070. You can connect with me on my website, www.ashshelly.com. For all of you, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your shares. And thank you for running over to my YouTube page right now and subscribing to the Ask Shelly YouTube channel. Again, that's the Ask Shelly YouTube channel where you can have full access to all of my videos, to all of my talks. I will be posting in the near future sessions that I'm having with people that want to use their emotional injury as, a, as an opportunity for other people to overcome their own. Thank you again for tuning in to this week's Ask Shelly segment. Run over to my YouTube channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And if you have a question, if you have a question, be sure to submit your questions to info at AskShelly.com and I will highlight it on a future Ask Shelly segment. So send me your questions. Your confidentiality will be protected. I would love, love, love your input. And thank you again for making these Ask Shelly segments so valuable to so many. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Be great and dominate in your sphere of influence. Be the light. Be the Bible that many will read. And make sure you preach wherever you go. And sometimes you can choose to use words.